Hello, my name is Irina. This video is mainly intended for new users of Pitbull Tax software, and it will help you with a small orientation on how to quickly start working the inside Pitbull Tax software. When you log in first time to Pitbull Tax software, you will see this page. This is a home page of the software. The first thing that uh, we always recommend new users to do is to enter your representative information. Why this is important? Most IRS forms uh, that are found inside Pitbull Tax software have paid preparer section. So, in order for you not to enter this information many, many times, enter it once under representative settings and it will be carried forward to all your forms. To do so, in the blue menu bar, click on the settings and then select representatives. This list is sorted alphabetically, so representatives is closer to the bottom. Once you're inside this uh, page, you will see a list of uh, your representatives, if you have any. If you uh, just started, you see empty table. To add a new representative, just click on Add a Record, and you will be able to enter the personal information, the contact information, and the ID information for the representative. Make sure you complete all the details that are necessary. Mostly it's um, your first and last name, firm name, street address, CD, state, zip code, phone number, PTIN, CAF ID, EIN, designation, and jurisdiction, and identification. This information is mostly used for power of attorneys, but uh, in some short uh, short version is uh, present on most IRS forms. After you enter the information, you can assign it to users. So if you have a multi-user account, and uh, let's say you have three user account, you can assign this representative to a certain user. Just click on the arrow down and you will be able to see all your users. So far I have only one user created in this license, so I will see only one name. Once representative information is uh, entered, you can easily modify it if necessary by clicking on pencil icon here and you will get back to what you have entered. The check boxes next to some fields represent information that you want to be uh, visible on the header of client questionnaire. When you view client questionnaire tutorial, you will see that when you send it electronically to your client, you can include some information in the header so that um, the taxpayer can uh, quickly identify you or call you from uh, that page or contact you by email. So any check boxes that you check here will appear in the client questionnaire. So if you want to add a phone number and email address, just check uh, these boxes and click Save. So this is how you enter representative information. Now we are ready to start entering our client's data. And to do so, we'll go back to the home page. I just clicked on the check mark icon, or alternatively I could have clicked on the logo Pitbull Tax, and that would have taken me to the home page as well. In order to create a new client, click on this icon with a plus sign located in the gray menu bar. It will prompt you to create individual client or a business client. So let's say we are going to create individual client. So this will open a client profile page uh, that we will need to complete in order to start working. So you will have to enter the first name. The middle name is optional. All mandatory fields are marked with red asterisk. So if I want to create a Susan Smith, and for the entry type, we have two selections inside Pitbull Tax software. So you can either create a client. The client is uh, someone that already engaged by your firm, or a prospect, someone that you are just trying to um, 
close a case with. So for this selection, I would choose client. Then you can enter the taxpayer's address, uh, phone numbers, email addresses, and so on and so forth. The more information you enter in client profile, the better. However, only three fields here are mandatory. First name, last name, and the entry type. The client profile has many different sections. Uh, it will have a section about the spouse, uh, about IRS liability that you can enter, or if you use IRS transcripts add-on um, later, this liability will be uh, populated directly from the transcripts. There is also a section for notes, so if uh, it is a prospect or a client and you want to put some uh, initial notes, you can do it in this section. There is also some uh, additional information that you can assign to each client. It's a client ID. If your uh, firm uses uh, internal uh, ID system, you can enter your uh, client ID right here. You can set up a priority for this client from very low to very high. You can uh, change a status to inactive. All new clients will automatically uh, be created with active status, but uh, if uh, you closed uh, this case uh, and no longer want to see it in the list, you can close it. You can also specify who will be case manager on uh, this client. Uh, who is a sales representative, if, if it's not the same person and uh, another user, and uh, what is a client source, whether it it was a referral or uh, it came uh, this client came from a website or any other landing page or any other source. You can also link business clients. This uh, you will do later when you create business clients. And then we just click on the Save button. When we click Save, uh, we will see that we need to confirm disclosure and consent. The federal law, and mainly the Internal Revenue Code Section 7216, requires that whenever you disclose uh, clients' information, like social security number or any financial data, you will have to uh, obtain their consent first. And uh, the software will uh, allow you to automatically create this consent letter. We call it C7216 letter. So you can click right here. Uh, the text of the letter is uh, populated for you. You can change the duration of the consent from one to five years. You can change the salutation, uh, the client, and uh, who they authorize. Mainly, uh, this should be you as a representative or your firm as a representative. And then you can click on Save. You can print this letter or you can send this letter via email to your client. Because I haven't entered any information uh, for my client, her email address, it's not populated. But basically, uh, this is a body of the email message that your client will receive, and this will be a link to the letter, which they can electronically sign. And the instructions for electronic signature are provided for your client in the letter itself. So once you click send, it will be emailed to your client. So, if I want to uh, go back and uh, confirm that I already have uh, my client's electronic signature on uh, IRC 7216 letter, I check this box that I confirm, and then I can enter social security of the client. So, after that, I click finish, and my client has been created. So the client name that you are currently working with will be located in the gray menu bar. If you entered uh, their phone number, it will be shown under the name. Since I haven't entered any, it is empty. So now that you created a client, you are ready to start working. The step-by-step -step workflow that is located on the home page of the software will help you with this. It will help you to uh, know what is necessary to do in uh, 
each stage of the case processing. For example, once you create a client uh, or prospect for that matter, you may want to send them a client questionnaire. Client questionnaire is an electronic um, collection of data and the data is entered by your client. So you save time on the data entry by letting your client to enter all necessary details, like information about their bank accounts, their investment accounts, their real estate, their income expenses, and so on and so forth. Later, uh, I suggest you watching the client questionnaire video so you can see how that tool uh, works. And then you follow steps. After you uh, pre uh, send client questionnaire, you may need to create a power of attorney or tax information authorization. And to access all the steps, just click on the Start uh, button located right next to the step. So the steps are usually pretty self-explanatory. So, for example, on step four, uh, you can get IRS transcripts and generate transcript reports. For this step, you will need to have access to IRS transcripts delivery and uh, reporting add-on. This is optional feature of Pitbull Tax software. If you don't have it and you do the analysis manually, you can do so as well. And ju then just uh, change the status of this step that you have completed it. Then you can diagnose a case and see what uh, resolutions and what forms uh, you may need to prepare. Then we have a resolution evaluation option tool. Uh, this tool will allow you to uh, compare the offering compromise, installment agreement, and currently not collectible cases, and what are the outcomes on those. After you diagnose the case and evaluated resolution options, the next step will be to select settlement option. And you can select from the various options listed right here. So for example, if you work offering compromise doubt as to collectability, you can check it and click Save. So once you go back to step seven, the option that you have selected will be identified here in green color. The next step will be to calculate fees. And uh, the Pitbull Tax software has a tool on how to help you with calculating your fees. It's up to you whether you want to use our module or if you have your own pricing, you can proceed uh, and skip this step. The next step is to create engagement letter. So it's a formal contract between you and your client that specifies terms and conditions of your engagement. After that, you request documents and uh, send your client a list of documents that are necessary uh, for you to work his or her case. After that, uh, since we have um, selected offering compromise doubt as the collectability, uh, the step will be to complete Form 433A OIC. And once you click uh, on Start button, you will go back, um, you will go to this form and you can start the data entry. I'll go back to my step-by-step -step workflow. After that, if um, applicable and my client has a corporation or partnership business, uh, we will need to prepare 433B OIC form. And after that, form 656. After forms are completed, we will compile some porting documentation and you will see what documentation is necessary for offering compromise case uh, clicking on this step. And the final step will be to submit a case to the IRS. And once you click on the submit a case to the IRS, it will give you instructions on what you need to do, how you need to send payments, where you need to send payments and mail your uh, offering compromise package. So this is how you start working the case. I also recommend you to watch navigation tutorial that will help you to um, learn how to easily find each menu inside Pitbull Tax software. Thank you for watching. 
and I hope you will enjoy our application.